because you're looking at me, right? What do you notice about it? It's what? It's smaller. Why do you think that is? It doesn't work as hard. Hmm? It doesn't work as hard? No. Your heart there? Ah, yeah. Okay? All right. So, so now with that said, here are the lungs, and they're sitting on a floor, right? Which is your diaphragm or the solar plexus, right? Now, if you guys play a sport or whatever and you get hit in that area, right? You know, if that solar plexus, what happens is the solar plexus moves up and down and up and down. When it moves up and down, what happens to the air in the lungs? In and out, in and out. Get it? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So if you get kicked in this area and that solar plexus is not moving up and down because it's reacting to the kick, you're, long, you, you're not able to breathe properly, right? All right. <coughs> so now, I'm gonna ex now that you kind of have some of the lung idea, in the f you have two tubes here, one in the front, which is called the trachea, all right? Air goes in the trachea, and then on top of the trachea, there's a little door called the epiglottis, all right? When you're eating, as Terry is right now, his tongue will push the food into the back of his throat, and the epiglottis is gonna what? Close the trachea. So the food then goes down the tube that's behind, which is the esophagus, and it goes down into your Okay, so now you see how close they are. They're very close to one another, the trachea directly behind its esophagus. So what covers the, tra the trachea? Epiglottis. Epiglottis. Okay, that's the little door. The air comes down into the trachea, goes into your bronchus and into your lungs. Traditionally, this is how this scenario occurs. Let's say you're at a party and everybody's having a good time and you're eating and you're laughing. And then when you are laughing and you have a piece of food in your mouth, you inhale and you pull the food into the trachea because the epiglottis was not quick enough to close. All right, you've got the mechanisms. And so then the person starts to cough horrifically, horrifically, because the reflex is this is not to happen. Do not let them, traditionally, let's say if you're out in a restaurant or something, they'll get up and they'll go to the bathroom because they're really coughing horrifically. And then they'll silently die in the bathroom. Okay, because what's happening is you're getting air hunger and they'll reach and reach and expand the, and then this goes down even further. The food will displace further down into the trachea and close it off. All right? So if someone, you see this happen and they go off to the bathroom, follow them. Okay? Leave them alone if they can cough. What did I just say? Leave them alone if they can cough. If someone can cough, then air is what? Exchanging. It's going in and out. All right. But when they all of a sudden go, and there is no ability, and usually they'll grab for their throat, that's when you get involved. All right? So, ladies, make a fist. Okay, the thumb's on the outside. All right? Okay. I just wanted to make sure, because women make fists like this. So what the concept is, is we're trying to raise what? What are we trying to raise? The diaphragm. So that we can displace the air. There's 2,000 pounds of air in the dead man's lungs. Displace the air that's going to what? It's going to force the food out of the trachea. All right? So, can I use you? <laughs> so also choking. If they're choking, they can they can breathe. If they can speak, if they yes. can res respond, even if it's kind of very raspy, but if there's any kind of communication, they can breathe. Then so, they'll leave them so, alone. Yeah. So we're not. You don't do any. You don't do it's anything. Only Dislodge as soon as they can. When it dislodges. When it dislodges. Yeah. When they can't make a sound, or obviously if you find them, you know, on the ground somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> make sure they're not sleeping either. Are you? And I'm gonna I'm gonna have everybody do it because. In an emergency, the first thing is to remain calm. If you're calm, everybody else around you will be calm, okay? If you go into that bathroom and that person you see is like this, you've got to yell for 911, so someone will get involved and help, okay? All right, so I make a fist like this, right? 
and I'm zeroing in on the belly button. So unless he's Urkel, remember Urkel, I'm heading for the belt buckle, right? Belly button. And the fist goes on top of the other hand this way, all right? Like this. Hum, hum. Oh, hmm, hmm. See that? <laughs> <laughs> now that was gentle. You're going to have adrenaline flowing. And I'm telling you, you're not going to get it on the first one. You may have to do it two, three, four times. I have done this with my, my friend's daughter. Uh, things that are very difficult. Like um, french fries. You chew them up and you've got this mass. Or what really very often men will get a bigger piece of steak than they should put in their mouth. And then it gets in there and you can't get it out. All right? So, do you have, does anybody have any questions? No? Well, I was going to say, you're saying the stomach, but uh, I, I thought you, you would start, my understanding was to start up in no, the cage. No, there's a reason. Number one, I don't want to break a rib. Right. Okay. Number two, particularly with children, you've got the end of the rib cage in the middle here, the xiphoid, mm -hmm. and you don't want it to snap that off. You've got to be very careful. Children's rib, their liver, is bigger. You'll see little kids with their little bellies. Right. Our livers are protected more by the ribs. Theirs are not. So. And also, when you're, you think of the body like a, a balloon or two. So if the end is stuck uh, with something that's blocking, so think of the balloon. So uh, where the end of the balloon where you blow in and out of to, to inflate, say that's stuck with something, a piece of food. If you want to try to expel that, you don't go right to the neck, right below that, and just try to squeeze there. You want to get all the way to the yeah. other end of the balloon, and you squeeze from Use below. Force. You, want to, you want to exactly drive. So when um, Lindy's talking about coming down into the belly button, you, you're not just kind of squeezing. You're, you're squeezing in and, in and up. It's like a J-shaped movement. And so you're trying to get as much pressure and force upwards to push out whatever is obstructing. <laughs> and so it's going to be a quick, hard push. Hard. Yeah. So you don't want to, you know, and worrying about even cracking the xiphoid, causing, you know, liver lacerations, all these other things, that kind of injury. It's secondary. Yeah, pales in comparison to them dying, dying or having brain damage. <laughs> yeah, you know, other things. They can, you start in about 10 seconds of not getting any oxygen, you can, you'll become unconscious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in about four to six minutes, you start uh, your brain cells start dying from lack of oxygen, and in about ten minutes, you have irreversible brain damage. So worrying about a few cracked ribs, because when we start doing CPR and everything, um, you know, we oftentimes, oftentimes, um, uh, crack ribs uh, and, and cause a lot of damage. Um, yeah, with CPR. But uh, but you don't have to worry about that. Yes. Are you in New, I know in New York you're covered by the Good Samaritan law. Mm -hmm. Are you? Is there such a law here yeah. in New Jersey yeah. as well? Where yes. Where yeah. You won't you be at fault for. Yeah. This yes. I think no. they should have a negligence law that if you see someone that's mm -hmm. and you don't stop that you should be. <laughs> okay, I was going to ask something similar because first eight, two things I thought. One is should we tell them that what we're going to do, just so that they're aware, like like permission. To oh, do absolutely. Something. Number two is how can you discern or distinguish between a blockage of that or a allergy reaction with the stomach like where their their throat is swelling up? And that you yeah, well yeah, yeah. Well, we, their face. Well, I've seen you have no go ahead no go ahead go ahead, go ahead. I've had friends that came into a party ate shrimp in a can and I, I mean when he came to the door I took him directly to Englewood Hospital yeah, their face is all swollen. That's the first, I mean, the first thing you're going to see, that it's, it, you, it's unrecognizable. It looks like it's going to burst. Mm -hmm. uh, then, that's, that's different. too late. But yeah. there's times where you can't do anything with that. Doing it it and it's just so, so... That's not going to work. So say if they have like an anaphylactic reaction yeah. to uh, bees, nuts, shellfish, whatever. Yeah. Um, so oftentimes, they're going to... So if, if anyone's seen the movie Hitch? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know where his face yeah. swells yeah. up? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's similar to that. So their eyelids will be uh, swollen, their... Their lips will be really swollen, their tongue can be swollen, their face is kind of genuine, so, but it's very, very red. And mm -hmm. they may have hives all over, um, they're going to feel itchy, they may be nauseous, vomiting, feeling lightheaded and dizzy. But it's, um, so Google, if you Google, you know, anaphylactic reaction or signs, um, it's a very different type of picture versus someone who's choking. You know, their lips are kind of turning like bluish mm -hmm. purple, they're getting very pale, um, you know, they can't. Uh, so someone who, who's developing anaphylaxis, it's not like instantaneous. Yeah. Um, you know, it'll be minutes, could be hours even later after they eat something. 
Um, they usually start to scratch or they yeah. feel their heart racing and they'll tell you, you know, my throat feels kind of itchy and scratchy. Yeah. They might feel like they're kind of wheezing. Um, there's something else called striders, a different type of breathing because of their airways kind of getting obstructed. Um, basically, it kind of sounds like they're breathing through like a, a thin tube. Uh, so it's kind of high-pitched wheezing sound, um, but it, it's not like an instantaneous where suddenly you can't choke within seconds. Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, sorry, yeah, within seconds they're turning blue, they're getting faint, and they're, everyone makes that, that it's a, kind of a reflex. Mm. Um, so it's a very, it's a very different picture. But it's a great question because, yeah, they both can have uh, some swelling. One, they're choking, they're getting faint, they're turning bluish purple and very pale. The other one, they're getting really swollen. Lips, eyelids, cheeks, nose, very red, having hives all over, um, and it's a it's more of a slow slower progression. Still yeah. fairly quick, but um, um, you know, it's not a ten second yeah. item. Yeah, it's, yeah, they're not suddenly, uh, you know, call uh, an ambulance and get them out. For some people, they can have a pretty quick, but it's not like yeah, within yeah. seconds. Yeah. Now, when you've got, there's two. Would have the EpiPen. Yeah, yeah, apparently we have, someone we have here, EpiPens. Shirley, I think, has an EpiPen here at church. Yeah. 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 And, and they're, they're pretty self explanatory. You can just follow the directions uh, on the bottom. Yeah. Uh, in essence, an antihistamine yeah. would, would solve that. For that, for that. When they, um, you, number one, no, they, if they have an EpiPen, you use EpiPen. If they don't, you go on an ambulance and you get them out. Right. Yeah. But for Heimlich, yeah. you've all kind of got, you, you understand? Mm -hmm. All right, you've all got the the idea behind it. Yes. All right, so there are two groups, two age groups, that are really, you, you've got to move, children and older people. Now, my, my daughter's friend was only like nine years old, and I wanted to say, we were walking across McDonald's parking lot when she, oh, you know, occluded, and she started, she turned navy blue instantly. Oh, wow. We were going skiing. And so I just, you know, grabbed her, you know, and I, I did this like three or four times before, and it was, it was not potato chips, uh, french fries. The other time that I did it was um, a, sen oh. the, a senior citizen, it was um, Easter, and we went out, and it was a man who was tall, like, you know, six feet or whatever, and we heard it, you know, you just kind of heard, Oop! and my husband and I looked and ran back there, and it was difficult to get a hold of him because he was sitting, he's not going to stand up for me, he can't. You know, so I had to really work to get a hold of him, and I had to like three or four times. But then finally, it was you know, it was it was meat, and it came up. So yeah. I'm telling you, you'll this, and my if my mother could do it, God rest your soul. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Yeah, and then there's a couple of other variations. So uh, pregnant women, oh, yeah. obviously, you don't want to be pulling on uh, the baby and and causing this severe kind of force. So with that, you do chest. Um, thrust where basically same kind of position you go behind them you hug them but you're over the belly under the breasts uh, and from that position you're pulling in and up and so um, that's the best you know yeah it's not as good not as effective but it's better than nothing and so you're going to keep going from that because position. she and the baby will die without oxygen yeah. how do you do it yourself well we're, all right yeah that's another thing too because you know they have said that you can you know drop yourself down over the back of a chair yeah. oh. okay. Yeah. okay you're trying to move this diaphragm up <laughs> So, that's very hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, wow. I, I can't it's imagine. It's good to know if you got forbid it. Yeah. yeah. So, Take your time. Like something something right. better than that. Yeah. yeah. Now, I want, don't do anything, but I want you all to, let's get up quickly and pair off. Yeah. Come out the front here so we can come around. Come out. Okay. 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 Come on, come out here so we can do this. Ladies, come on. One in front, one behind. And then we're going to flip. Don't do anything until we check hands. Yeah, so we do some pairs. Yeah, does everyone come pair up and just like line up kind of just all along here so we can kind of make, look at everyone. All right. The one in the back. 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 Listen. The one in the back, make a fist with your right hand. Put it by the <laughs> belly button. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Belly button. Put the hand by the belly button. 
I'm going with the instructor. All right, listen, go, watch. Go easy, I have a hernia, by the way, go ahead. I'm not kidding. All right, you all ready? On three. One, two, three. Oh, man. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I'm gonna say wait up there the belt and you're like, I'm gonna put it on the belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Go ahead, do it. Go ahead, do it. Do it! Pull it. 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 I Okay, so go ahead. Go ahead. Good, good, good. And just as far as you can. Now, so what you want to feel like you're doing is pushing it in, in and in and out. So like a JC. Is it really jerky like that? Like yeah. the one inch punch? Yeah, like this. So, so, so if I go so along. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so hard as well. You want to really, you want a sudden? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like a sudden hard bear hug on. Okay, yeah. 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 Come down here. Okay. <laughs> now you can either, you can like squeeze. Yeah. Good to right. So hard. And then, get it out. You want to feel like you're bringing, you know, sudden jerk. Yeah. That's, not, that's better. Yeah. So, uh, it feels like it's kind of really good. So here, this is really the shape So if you come in here. Let's go. Oh, you want the back kind of part. Oh my god, come out. Come out. Honestly, as hard as you can. You want to do it. You don't care? Oh my god. Okay, so it should be like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Okay, let's do mouth to mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, in, in a few minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah. so we're not, can we pass yeah. on that? Babies. Yeah. So, um. Everyone have a seat, please? Sit. Kind of visual. Dedication. So, there's also. Guys, listen to Albert. So, there's a, a, with the. Um, so, we're going to do one with the infants. And also, uh, so say someone is uh, larger than you, say you're. Small girl and some six foot guy uh, suddenly is choking and you can't get behind them in time and then and then they pass out. So you're not gonna be able to hold the 200 pound person when you're like 100 pounds and six inches shorter. So try to catch them. Just let them come come down uh, onto the grounds um, kind of as gently as possible. <laughs> and then the only other option that you can do is something called abdominal thrust. Mm -hmm. So Kara, can you come? <laughs> Lay down on the ground. They don't know each other. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I met my former husband. <laughs> True. So from here, he would usually straddle the. Yeah, he's you, exactly. <laughs> yeah. like, so "How you doing?" <laughs> no, okay. So here, so so you know they're they're unconscious. They're not breathing. And then from here, so you're gonna come. Same thing. You're you're at, yeah. at the belly button. And um, you know different uh, variations, but you're basically just pushing up as hard as you can from here. So you can kind of you can sit on the legs, just get some leverage, and and then you're just pushing yep. 
upwards toward their chest. Uh, should you check the mouth? Because like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. See if, yeah. If, if, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely. like um, spinach or something. It's just kind of stringy. So. Yeah, yeah, no. Even, um, well, if, you, no, if you see, if you're eating with them, you, you know that they're choking and, and you just couldn't do anything in time, you can just go straight to the double yeah. thrust. If you're not really sure, yeah, you can absolutely open their mouth, see if, uh, if you see any yeah. food or any, any obstruction, um, and then you get down and you can do the abdominal thrust, okay? Um, so, I'm gonna bring Karen back in a few minutes, but... <laughs> Is that more effective? She, like, if someone's choking, should I just say, hey, lie down? No, no, no. no, no. no, do, no, no. Do, do, do the Heimlich maneuver yeah. first. Better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you have yourself oh. against them. Get yeah. right up against them. And you, right. you know, the yeah. adrenaline's gonna be pumping. Okay. You better really just keep yeah. doing it. Yeah, and if, if their food is just kind of stuck here in the throat, and they're leaning over and you're pushing it, it's easier it to, to expel, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. push that up, then, then they're lying down, and they're gonna yeah, come up. Yeah. Yeah. And then with, with infants, so a little baby, um, you know, you see, they, and they can have anything, like a little Skittle, uh, a button or something that they yep. put yep. in their mouth and, they, and then suddenly they're, um, they're turning blue, they're, you know, initially they were kind of crying and they're not really <coughs> responding. Uh, so with this, and this is actually, I wish we had a, an actual Mannequin. dummy, yeah. Um, but, so you're gonna do, you're gonna alternate between uh, five back thrusts and five chest compressions, okay? So when you, um, so with the baby here, what you wanna do is you wanna hold uh, their jaw like this, and then their body is gonna be aligned with their forearm, okay? And you're gonna be in this position. So say, say you're sitting, your, their face should be at the lowest point, and you're going to be hitting five back thrusts. Now, when I hit it, it's like the Heimlich maneuver. Like you're hitting hard because oh you want to, you want to, you got to build as much force as you can to get that out. So, but that's why it's very important. If you grab the child and you you grab their neck, then you're choking them and you're causing you know damage to the neck. So you have to be very careful that your your hand is right on their jaw, and securely on their jaw. And you're supporting the neck that way. Yeah, and you, exactly. Yeah. And then the, and you want to make sure their body is aligned on your arm so that you're, so it's not over here and you're, you're causing damage. Um, their head is down and you're hitting five hard back thrusts. And then you switch over and then you're doing two finger, one, two, three, four, five chest compressions of about one and a half inches deep, okay? And then if, the, if it hasn't come out, same thing, grab, Flip over, put down. Stay calm and head. just do it. Yep. It's as far down and keep going. You're, this is basically your child's life, life or yeah. death situation. If you can't get that obstruction out, they're gonna die. They're gonna die or have brain damage for the rest of their life. So concerning about you know uh, causing a fracture or anything else, la you know, it's all secondary. This is literally life or death. So five, two, three, four, five. Grab, turn over. One, two, three, four, five. And you keep doing that until, and then after, uh, after two of those cycles, then you can open up the mouth to look to see if there's any food, scoop anything out, mm -hmm. and and keep going until until like you can um, get the food out, or you can hear them breathing, or they start crying or whatnot. Or an ambulance arrives. Yeah, and then after that, once the food's out and they're still not breathing on their own, then we're gonna start CPR. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Yeah. Okay. So yes, question. Question. Were you pressing the front part? What part of the bot? Um, between the nipples. Right between the nipples. Okay. okay. Everything so that means you're right in the middle of the. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. Yeah. So pretty much. Doctor, nurse. Right just where? Talking. Yeah. Right where the <laughs> the button is. It's so right between the nipples. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. And that's really and when you think of it, the strongest part of the uh, the rib cage, the sternum, because all the ribs connect there. Okay. So. Yeah. And it, it presses. So, now. Yeah. Can go I ask no, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to ask you a question now. All right. You've got all the anatomy and you've been thinking. Now, why wouldn't you hit an adult on the back? Think about it. There's air hunger in there. They're reaching, and you know how people like to slap them on the back? Yeah. Why do you not do that? It might yeah. more. It makes it larger. Yeah. Okay. You arrive on a, on a scene, you see an accident. There's blood all over the place, and the person is bluish. What's more important, the bleeding or the breathing? The breathing. The breathing. Good. You're thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay, and then, so... Uh, we've, we've been able to, you know, take out the obstruction, the food, or whatever, but they're not breathing. Then we, now we need to go to CPR. So Heimlich, getting the food out, that's the first thing. So uh, when this is happening, just think of ABCs, okay? Airway, breathing, circulation, okay? First, most important thing is airway. So, um, so Karen, come, come up here. Can we, uh, can we, uh, 
<laughs> we, um, just put slide the table up. All right. Can you lie? Just lie. One second. One second. It'll be all right. Oh, yeah. oh so <laughs> with the pens, uh, it's very easy. Just read the instructions. Pull off this blue safety tab. Jab into the thigh. Hold it down for 10 seconds, and then dispense. It's Does very it say easy. Inner thigh. Uh, I mean, no, 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 just onto the thigh. That's a big muscle group, so just boom. And um, it's very easy. There's, you know, physically assess, no medicine. Um, that's a trainer. That was one the, the blue one practice is trainer. one. The blue yeah. one is the practice, practice one. If you want. But don't, yeah. don't punch yourself with the other one. Yeah. So once you put it, once you put <laughs> once it you release the skin, this, it will automatically go Yeah, so there's, yeah. A little, there's a little needle inside that once you press and you hold oh, down, okay. it will dispense the, the, the medication into the body. Hold it down for 10 seconds. So don't, in the real life, don't do, do use that one. Yeah, this is a trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't grab this. And just grab. keep in mind, though, um, even though you use that, you still have to call 911. Oh, absolutely. That's, that, when absolutely. that wears off, that you can go back not to only, it may not, if it wears off, again uh, and you, some people may need two doses. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so definitely get this. Still call, uh, nine call nine, Yeah, absolutely, call 911. So that's a great point. Even with, with CPR, first thing you do, call 911. Yeah, yeah. And if you can't call 911, then don't say, oh, hey, someone call 911. Say, uh, Anthony, call 911 now. You tell me um, you know, when, when you call them and, and then they said they're coming. Um, you know, if you walk into a room, even if you scream, call 911, you see someone on the floor and they're out of it, you know, and you get down there and you scream call 911, the person who hears it, you know, they're going to come out of curiosity, if nothing else, to see what's going on. And there's something called the bystander effect, where uh, everyone assumes that someone else is doing yeah. it. So if you don't give someone personal responsibility and say, you know, James, call 911, call, let me know, like, when they said, um, just confirmation that, 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 uh, um, that you spoke with them. Uh, if but you don't know them, say you. You yeah. right there. <laughs> it's funny, when I train, they're like, you, go run, get a, find a pay phone, call 911. And now everyone's got cell phones, it's a lot easier, but, uh, <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, airway, so, um, that's the most, with the airway, um, you, when you want to assess to see if they have an open airway, um, this is considered kind of a closed airway, you actually want to tilt their head back a little bit, not too, too far, because uh, that helps to open up Pull the, the trachea, yeah, and from there you can open up. Um, you know, either see if there's any obstructions or whatnot. But this is where you're going to check to see if they have an open airway. Okay, so you know, in the restaurant, you have the food, you got the food out. Um, then you want to. Um, this is how you assess. So from here, tilt the head back. It's, so it's just called a health head tilt. And then after that, uh, for B uh, with breathing, you want to see if they're breathing on their own. So you can uh, look down. And you're going to feel it with your yeah. cheek and hear it. Yeah. And also, you can actually uh, look at their chest to see if their chest and stomach are rising up and down uh, with their breaths, okay? Uh, so yeah, so you want to feel it, hear it, and see it, okay? Now, if they're not, then you're going to do two rescue breaths to see if uh, the, the air, uh, airway is actually patent, is actually open to actually you know, open. receive the air. Because otherwise, if not, then you need to go back to the abdominal thrust to open that up, okay? But if you don't move the head and you just keep it like this and close, and then you open up, you don't feel anything, um, and you don't see anything rising, if you don't tilt the head back and open up the airway, you could be breathing, and it's That's closed anyway. here because the tongue or the tonsils or other issues are <coughs> blocking the airway and you're not doing anything. Okay? That's why men snore. Yes, yeah, it's one of the reasons. So, women too. Women too. <laughs> so tilt the head back. <laughs> so we got about 12 minutes. So tilt the head back, okay? Open the mouth. You can feel it or hear it and look at their chest um, and then to see if their chest wall is rising. So after that, we're going to do two rescue breaths. So you've got to pinch the nose, okay? Because otherwise want, what? It'll come out, right? Right. Oh, okay. You want to create a nice seal around the lips, okay? And then two full breaths, okay? And you'll see the chest. Yeah. You'll see it rise. Okay. So two full breaths, okay? And if you see the chest rise, you don't feel any obstruction against your breath, beautiful. Then after that, we're going to go to see uh, to to uh, actual compressions, okay? Or circulation or compressions, okay? Um, so same thing here, right between um, the nipple line, right in the middle of the chest, okay? So you can put one hand, actually it might be 
easier on the ground. But anyway, so so when you're doing this, um, so you're gonna put one hand down. Don't laugh. You're next. And <laughs> you're gonna interlock your hands, okay? So when you do this, you actually have to push down about one and a half to two inches deep through their chest. So this is this has to be a very forceful compression. Now compressions are, so the heart is right under the chest wall here, okay? Remember, it's on this left side. And um, the reason you're doing CPR is because the heart stopped. So the heart is not blumpy, pumping blood throughout the body. So you have to manually do that. But you have, to, you have to push through a chest wall, you have to push through a rib cage to manually compress the heart from the outside, okay? So if you're just, if you're just going like this and you're just doing these nice little touches, you're not doing anything, okay? Um, oftentimes you may hear cracks and broken ribs and that's, uh, that's fine, that happens. Um, so you're going to be doing 30 compressions and two breaths, okay? Now the rate is about 100 a minute, so essentially it's just as fast as you can go for 30 compressions, um, just to make it as easy. So the numbers are 30 compressions, 2 breaths, okay? And essentially just as fast as you can go. Um, if you go too slow, uh, then you're not going to be circulating uh, enough blood through. If you go too quickly, then the heart is not able to um, expand. expand, get new blood, and, and to keep circulating through. But uh, at 100 a minute, that's essentially uh, three compressions every two seconds. So if you're, if you're doing this properly and you're getting good, nice, deep compression, if you're doing it as quickly as you can, uh, that's uh, you know, pretty much the, the rate that you're going to need to do it. Okay. Um, so from here, what you want to do, you don't want to do this. And you don't want to just like push with your triceps because that you're going to get really tired really quick. So you want to stand right over their body. Your elbows are straight locked in. Your shoulders are right over your hands. And then you, so you're, you're, you're going like, well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to have her come down. So basically you're over them and you're using your whole body to come down and to push down. And so one, two, three, as far, and you count out loud. Okay. Everything you do out loud, you count out loud, you come to third. Other people will hear you and come and see what's going on and help you and, and get help. And it also helps you, to concentrate. not just to concentrate, but you know, it gives you, you know, uh, emotional stamina. Yeah. Question. Yeah, I said, uh, I was reading or heard something about <clears throat> not uh, breathing into the mouth, just go right to the chest. Mm -hmm. as, uh, I guess, uh, but why did he go to the, gummies, why did he go to the mouth? To make sure that it was that's not. Was so that's it. Yeah. The thing is, yeah. The, for for untrained CPR, for for people who are untrained, yeah, they say just go straight to compressions, 30 and two, 30 and two, and just do that until help arrives. Um, because if you don't know how to do rescue breaths, you don't know what to look for. Um, but at the same, honestly, if they have an obstructed airway, then you just wasted your yeah, time and, exactly. and they're, they're brain dead. Right. So you really want to. Um, so you are right. I was speaking more to the breathing into the mouth. Yeah. So yeah. checking that. But All of that. Yeah. So the, yeah, the, that's true though. The new um, there are new uh, guidelines that say skip the rescue breathing and go right to uh, compressions. Yeah. If um, you see that they're breathing. Go well, right yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. That too. Um, but that's for the untrained. For someone who doesn't know what they're doing, um, just just do compressions until someone comes. That's better because it's better than nothing. Um, but uh, you should technically. Um, check their airway to make sure that it's patent, to make sure that they can receive the air, and then, and then go on to yeah. that. Yeah, so okay. that you're not forcing it, you know. Yeah. Oh, and I did forget one point. So if you come across someone that's just lying unconscious on the ground, you know, so check to see if they're awake, hey, are you awake, are you okay, and they're unresponsive, then you want to check their pulse, okay? The pulse will let you know that their heart is pumping, that's producing um, not with your thumb. heart rate. Yeah, not with your thumb, because you, you can feel a pulse in your own thumb. Your own thumb. So pulse. second and third fingers. You're gonna you're gonna check for what's called the carotid artery. Do that right now. Check right under, go under your jawline, yeah. right here. You can feel it. Can everybody feel their carotid? One. Don't do both of them. Because yeah. <laughs> you'll pass out. <laughs> <laughs> that's what kids are doing in pedophile, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's 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 so can you guys feel? Can you guys all feel that? Okay. Yeah. So. In this situation, you don't. Uh uh. This is the major to the brain. And also, if you 
So there's two people that know CPR, you can oh, yeah, trade yeah, off. Because right. yeah. you get tired very fast. I mean, I don't so have much one is pumping. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I feel it. Because he's freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody felt it, right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, and then caveat to that. If, um, with an infant, you don't check, you don't check their carotid artery. Uh, you check their brachial artery. For infants, they have a much smaller neck. Their neck is a lot more fragile. If they're, you know, passed out and, and you can hyperextend the neck, cause cervical injuries. Um, and it's fatter, it's shorter, you can't feel that pulse as well. So you check their brachial artery. Which is on the inside of your... Yeah, between your armpit and the elbow. And you can just press two or three fingers um, between <coughs> your biceps and your triceps, right in through here, okay? <coughs> when you're an infant, uh, it's hard to feel when you're an adult. Um, and, um, but when you're an infant, that's right pretty much under the skin. It's very, it's very superficial. Mm -hmm. So uh, you well, want to check. From toddler on up, they need to check the neck. Yeah, after, after one. So right. infants mm -hmm. below one, one and not younger, check their arm. Uh, after that, uh, then you can check their neck. Okay, because, you know, like just with young kids, you see them like they have like no yeah. neck yeah. strength uh, and support and everything. So you don't want to potentially cause any more damage. Okay, so. Now you know how they, they developed this method? What the Heimlich maneuver. The Heimlich, not CPR. Dr. Heimlich used his beagles, and he placed food. You know, he would choke them, and then, yeah. So, if your if your dog chokes, any kind of a mammal, you can. It's the same concept. You got your lungs resting on a diaphragm. You just displace it. You just reach down and grab them and. Hmm? He, he developed this, I mean, he, they didn't die, you know, so. <laughs> the kinds of things that kids really kind of choke on, hot dogs, oh, yeah, I'm sure. grapes, Skittles, um, pennies, buttons, marbles, dimes, marbles. Yeah. Cereal. I had kids in the ER shoving cereal up both their nostrils yeah. and gum. Oh. And in their ears, they they just kids just stick anything into any orifice. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Uh, and if you're sitting next to somebody, you know, let's say in a breakfast nook or something, you can do this to a, a younger person. It's it's, it's ha no, you just reach right around them. You're sitting next to them, you can just you know reach right around and do it. And then so an infant for infant <laughs> CPR, um, your child's is unresponsive, turning blue, not breathing. So similar thing. So with them, try not to hyperextend their neck. Um, so go in. You know they're not um, they're responding to you. Same thing. You can so you kind of tilt it back a little bit. Open up their mouth. Feel for their breath. Look at their chest and stomach to see if they're uh, breathing or not. With uh, so with a child, anyone above one, and they kind of change all the guidelines to make it a lot easier. Anyone above one, um, you know. So you pinch the nose and two quick breaths to see. With an infant, because they're so small, uh, if you take, and with a regular person, full breath. <sighs> you'll deep breath with, a normal, with your normal set of lungs. If you do that on an infant, you'll blow out their lungs. Because your lungs are way bigger than, than an infant's lungs. So basically, the amount of air that you have in your mouth is all that you're gonna breathe into. Pumps. And Yeah, and with an infant, you actually, you go over their mouth and their nose. So your mouth and lips go over the whole thing. You're, you, you have a full air mask. So that's all you're doing, okay? You're not going Because <gasps> no. then, yeah, then yeah, you're going to cause a lot of lung damage um, that uh, they may not recover from later on, okay? So you, you can develop um, lung tissue jam damage and oxygen toxicity and everything. So, um, so same, so two. And then one, <coughs> two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is also 30 and 2, so, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. and this is uh, about an inch to an inch and a half, so, and pretty much as fast as you can push down, uh, and kids are a bit more pliable, they're more flexible, um, you're not going to have the same kind of resistance as you would with an adult, okay, rarely are you going to, you know, crack any ribs or do anything with, with your child. Um, with that, you just use two fingers. Two fingers, really between, no, two no, fingers. no, because that will cause too much damage, okay, so, one, two, so, uh, if you're going to do this, so, Hold it and, and su support the head in the palm of your hand with a slight extension in your wrist. And you're going to hold, you're going to cradle the baby across your arm. Okay, so right here. 
So you tilt the head back, you can feel for the breathing, okay? Check the pulse in their arm to see if there's any pulse, and there's not. So you see their breath going up in a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 30. And just keep going, keep going, okay? So with an infant, you actually do this first for one cycle and then call 911. Or, you know, have someone else call 911. Everyone else, call 911 right away and then, and then do, do the CPR. Heimlich slash CPR. Okay? Yes? Uh, so what if you're by yourself and you're choking? Uh, no, I'm to feel like too to something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, that's really hard. Yeah, it's um, tough. You know, you, you can try to do that on the back of a chair where you just basically try to generate the same thing and, um, you know, push yourself down as hard as you can and keep trying to do that. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. It's, you it's just really... call 911 at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't say anything. Yeah. yeah. You just call 911. Um, Oh, or uh, if you yeah, can't, yeah, much. it's it, that's really that's yeah, really hard. That's the best thing you have. But you can find any surface, like the side arm of a couch, okay. of a table, and try to. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Always eat with someone. Yeah, I eat alone a lot. We moved to C one, the room uh, behind the room.